hello everyone welcome to ek inspire youtube channel as you know on this channel all we do is extract powerful life lessons from important life stories today i'm with a gentleman who i'll describe as a tech guru i mean i don't think i have to describe it. he's a tech guru and some of us know him for also traveling around the world we want to get into his life story how it all started in the tech space and how he's able to get to where he is now and what especially we can learn from his life story so welcome to you can inspire youtube channel yeah thank you very much <laughs> wonderful it's, it's a great pleasure to to have you on this platform yeah, yeah and i'm actually happy to be invited to be on your channel wonderful so, i'm wonderful. really happy wonderful you thank god <laughs> since you're happy and i'm happy <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> Okay, so, um, well, for those of you who don't know, he's actually my senior too from high school. So, his name is Henry. Henry, please tell us the, the full name. Shalom, Fashi, Aholu. Okay, okay. And so, let, let me begin from high school. And yeah. so, I knew you to be somebody who was very talented when it comes to uh, commentary. Yes, yes. yes. Very Sports true. Commentary. Yeah, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> And so it took me a, a bit by surprise when I realized that you were venturing into tech. Yes. So just walk me through how that happened. I mean, how you discovered your passion for commentary, yeah. uh, sorry, for tech and decided to venture into that. Program. Okay. So let me see. For the football commentary, it's something that I know it's my talent. I've been doing for like since I was a kid. Like oh, I was wow. just doing it because I was like, because it was my talent. I find no difficulty in doing anything relating to commentary and I did it in VHS and I got into Wonderful. senior high school and when I went to the university too, I was doing it and with the university's radio station too, normally on a Saturday like this, we do pre-match analysis of every football match that um, was being played. Wow. So um, it was it's something that I think I was naturally born, born with. with. Yeah. Wonderful. So why tech? Why didn't you decide to venture into that space full time instead? Okay, so I think tech too was something that I was into even when I was a kid. When oh, I wow. yeah, when I got my first computer, I think it was a Pentium 4 computer. So that was what I started doing a little bit of IT related things, trying my hands on it. But because I was young by then, I didn't know what the future was. So my main concern was mainly with um, the commentary until after I got to um university that okay. was when i realized i need to actually take a look at um the tech space okay. i actually decided to dive into the tech space because um i didn't get more opportunities when it came to the commentary side i went for various auditions oh really at, yeah at tv3 and amazing it, yeah it didn't go well but i knew it was my talent and i also knew the tech what was something that i wanted to do okay so after i tried a couple of radio stations they were not interested in me even wow. though i was working by then i still wanted to do it because it was my passion but i realized i wasn't getting the opportunity so i decided to totally forget about it and okay concentrate on my tech which i knew would probably get me somewhere i see wow, yeah. that's interesting <laughs> so you went to uh, UMass, right University of Energy. Okay, okay. Senior. Okay, all right, okay. And what did you study? Computer then? science. Computer science. Yeah. Okay. So it means, okay, you are chasing the two passions. Yes, I did, exactly. Okay. I also knew you were very, very good at clapping. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For that, yeah. I, <laughs> back in high school. Yeah. I, do I mean, your clap would be yeah. the dead. <laughs> okay. So I'm sure like there are other, you know, interests that you also had, but you had to like filter and then yes. settle on this. Yes. This so two. in when I was in high school, I decided um, looking at the way things are, mm. I didn't want to do anything relating to um, journalism because I felt I would just be restricted to only one side. But and also because I had the passion for tech, I decided to pursue computer science. Okay. And maybe I can use the sports journalism as something on the side. Mm. So th that was how I approached 
um, my future. Yeah. Okay. Now, after university, studying computer science. Yeah. What What happened after that? Because I also know people who study computer science, but you know they were not able to like become mm. as successful. You know. In yes. The space. So yeah, very how, true. how did that happen? Yeah. So if I tell you, when I was in university, I graduated with third class in computer science, and wow. I think I was mm. one of the worst of my colleagues. But I think when I got to level three hundred, I realized what was being taught in school was not what we we are actually going to face in the real life. Mm. So even though most of my friends were focused on what was being taught in school, I saw the big, the bigger picture at that time and I knew what I wanted to do. So I actually started taking some courses that I knew because in school they were teaching us Visual Basic, C++. But when you take a look at the job market, what they actually required were things relating to Python, mm. um, C Sharp, Java, and the rest. But what we were learning in school wasn't something. So when I got to level 400, like I decided not to even concentrate on what was being taught in school, wow. but really what I wanted to to do. Mm. And I think that was when I realized my dis even though my parents were actually disappointed I got that class, I just told them they shouldn't worry. Wow. So they wow. should come to my graduation because That's I knew uh, the third class I got in computer science was not something that was going to determine what um, I would be mm. when it comes to the tech space. And surprisingly, I've worked with over seven, eight companies and none of them has, have ever asked me of my computer science degree before. None of them. And wow. Yeah. And it's surprising. So wait, on what basis were they then like recruiting you? Yes. So what the, you can have um, first class in computer science, but when you are being given, you said, okay, I'm a backend engineer. So when they give you the task, they are not actually looking at what you got in school. What you got in school. Would you be able to program this for them? If you would be able to do it, fair enough, they get you on board. But if you have, if you don't, so uh, um, I think I'm, I even have another friend of mine who did business accounting. And I actually gave him some tips on this programming. He learned it and he got his first job. So all what is needed is making sure you understand the concepts of programming and everything related so that when you are being given a job that hmm. oh can you work on this or can you develop this for us if you'll be able to do it there is a likelihood that hmm. you are going to get wow. um, the job that's inspiring yeah so, so i mean like not a lot of students are in school and then are so intentional about life after school that they yeah. get to research into what even the the space demands exactly and try to equip themselves for yeah. that how how did that realization dawn on you how did okay that so when i i, re I actually realized that when i was in level 300 because something told me you are studying computer science so after computer science what's next what would you use the computer science for so when i started doing my researches i realized um there were a lot of fields under computer science mm. um, and under programming so after going through all those fields back in engineer front end um, DevOps and um, QA automation, which is the site that I'm currently um, focused on. I realized all what were being demanded were not exactly what the, the, classroom yeah, was. the classroom was. Because I was I wanted to know so after school with what they are teaching us, would I be able to apply that hmm. to the real life? And I realized I wasn't seeing that uh, yeah. So that was when I actually started um, learning things on my own. I don't know what the curriculum is now mm. at schools now. So I can't really tell for those who are in schools now. Okay. But when I was in school, that was how it was. So I actually decided to um, actually take my own path and start looking at what I would be. Okay, yeah. okay. wonderful. Yeah. So now after school and after equipping yourself with all this, did you did you start getting jobs while in school or it was after yes. personal service? So mm. with, and because I had already established myself with learning some little programming, my national service, I applied to a company at East Legon. Okay. It was a tech company. Okay. So they were basically doing software related things and so they actually did a lot of mega projects in Ghana. I see. I think we are not supposed to mention the projects okay. Okay. because some of them are government based. Okay. So oh, that was wow. where I actually did my service and after doing my service there, it actually gave me the enlightenment of how the tech space was. So I wanted to be retained over there, but um, maybe things didn't work the way 
I wanted. So from there, so from there, I I think immediately after service, I applied to a job and at um I think that was my first job. It was at uh, around East Lagon, thereabouts. I forgot in Ashley Butchie. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that was when I got my first job after school. So I think I was there for about three weeks and I got another offer somewhere else. And looking at the opportunity those people were providing me, I quickly switched. Interesting. And I didn't even <laughs> take the pay. So oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even take the pay at all. So I had to move to that new company. I think it was Acom, which was in um, Asylum Down. Okay. So I think I was there for about eight months. And I was read out to a recruiter on LinkedIn that, hey, they've gone through my LinkedIn profile and they've seen my skill set and everything. Okay, so when they told me um, they needed my services, I actually said, yeah, I was interested. So they gave me a test, as I was saying, mm. that normally they are not look, they are not after your certificate, but they are I looking get after. A job done. Yes, if you'll be able to get a job done. So um, they gave it to me, and within two weeks, they actually wanted me to finish the project within two weeks but i finished it because that time i was really desperate for like a job yeah. no, not that i was desperate for a job but, but like i was eager. yeah i was eager so immediately gave me i finished the project within two days i submitted it <laughs> and uh they go back to me that they really liked my approach and everything so it was an international company wow i don't know because these companies that i work with it's normally eh? yes they do not want you to put the name out. yeah yeah put so the name fine, out it's fine yeah mm. so yeah after doing it i had an online interview and i had to teach um not teach explain to them how i went about my solution and everything and they were actually impressed and yeah. straight away i got the offer so during that time i was working with two companies because i was already working with one company before that one came so i, I combined the two and the beautiful thing about it was they were both remote so i was very good with my time management mm. and all so i was able to balance the two jobs okay. together and okay. that's what i've been doing till now wow wow <laughs> that's that's really amazing so yeah. how how lucrative would you say the tech space is okay so well <laughs> it's okay I, it's good okay <laughs> it's good it's also sensitive eh? Oh, no, 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 no. For okay. that, it's not that sensitive. Okay. It's very lucrative. Okay. And anyone who would definitely want to venture in, into it. Yeah, it's just that now it's become more difficult in getting these kind of um, remote jobs because mm. What I've realized is, for me, even though I have jobs, I still applying day by day. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm the money I'm looking for. I'm looking for something huge, and even though the one I have now is quite okay, I'm still like we are, we are as humans. You are yeah, never satisfied sure, sure, with. Sure, sure. I mean, it's, yeah. it's always good to go yeah. for the next step. Yeah, yeah so, so as I'm applying and with this experience that I've gained, I'm realizing it's now more difficult, especially when you're in Africa, okay. to get these kind of okay. remote jobs. Okay. So you, you've, from the story, you've been in Ghana all through. Yeah, I've been in Ghana all through. Just that whenever I get the time, I just go out to, to on a vacation oh, wow. and I come back. I see. Yeah. Those of us who follow you on Instagram, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I normally, when I travel, I normally try to post. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, yeah. um, for somebody who is like listening to this and then they, yeah, they want to start tech from from scratch. From scratch, they don't know anything. What What are some of the? Okay, first of all, what's your like? What's your expertise in in the tech space? What, what Okay, so for me, I'm a QA automation engineer. Okay, so basically, what I do is whenever the developers write their code. Mm. I also write my code to ensure that whatever feature that they've developed, my code is also going to test it and make sure it actually meets the requirement. Okay. And making sure there is no issue or there is no bug with what they've developed. Okay. So as they are doing their development, I'm also doing my hand in hand. I so see. that immediately they are done with their development, I'm also done with my development as well. Then we can push it because you can write a software code and when it's not really tested properly and it goes, there will be a lot of issues. Someone will be uh, up way, it's not, I'm not getting what I'm wanting. If I click on this, it doesn't do what um, it's supposed to do. So that's where I actually come in to okay. 
verify and validate that whatever feature that were being developed by the developers actually work as the way okay. they are intended. So what I'm thinking is comparing that to what I do writing, yeah. that would be like proofreading oh, okay. or copy editing. Oh, okay. So it's like somebody does the writing, mm -hmm. then you check to see exactly. that there are no errors. Yes, and no, exactly. No interest. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, as I was saying, for somebody who wants to start yeah. from scratch, into the tech space because they've heard that the tech is really good and it's, it's, it's the future. Yes, it is. Where do they start from? What? Okay, so basically, you don't require, you don't need to be a nerd or highly inclined in IT to actually begin. All what you need to have is the devotion because it takes a lot of time. Okay. It takes much of your time. Okay. And people, I know people who actually begin, but who began, but on the way, they fell off. Mm. Yeah, because 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you'll be awake and you'll be behind your computer. No one knows what you're doing. Wow. But you know the, the, the dedication behind. I see. Yeah, what you're doing. And sometimes, like this, if I have food at home, the whole week or two weeks, you wouldn't see me outside. I'll just be <laughs> behind my computer. And wow. Just working or learning, and time to time I'm learning. As I talk to you now, there was a course that there's a course that I'm still taking, and I'm not yet. Even though I've gained about getting to seven years of experience, I'm still learning. Hmm. Because the whites, they are also learning, and if you are not learning, you are going to be where you are. So that's the first bit. You need to be very devoted okay. in what you want to do. And the second thing is you need to know exactly what you are doing. Because the tech space is big, someone will be like, I want to do front end, I want to do back end, I want to do DevOps, I want to do this, I want to do that. So they end up learning everything. And if, from my experience, if you are like someone who is like jack of all trades, you wouldn't be able to specialize in one aspect. And that really becomes difficult. Mm. Yeah, because with the Ghanaian companies, that's what they actually want. They want someone, they will pay you for you to do everything. Okay. They want to pay you for you to do the front end, for you to do the DevOps, for you to do yeah. like everything in yeah. all. I, I share the same experience uh -huh. because people want to recruit a social media manager and they want you to be the same person handling all their social media platforms, same person doing the graphic design mm -hmm. and you know, maybe mm -hmm. going to take pictures and take videos. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's one thing that's really killing I would right. say it's, it's really not helping most mm. of the Ghanaian companies because mm. everyone in his specialty. But if you are trying to force me, so there was one company I worked with at um, Roman Rich where they were trying to make me do what is not my expertise. So I think with that company, I wasn't there for long. For about one month, I, I left I because I wasn't finding joy in what I was doing. Okay. So that's another thing that I would probably advise people on knowing what you want to do. So if it's. Mm -hmm. Okay, if yes. it's DevOps you want to do, make sure you are fully focused on DevOps because the 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 goal is to be at one of these um fan companies in the USA and they wouldn't want someone who can do this, this or that. They want An someone expert. who is really um who has um who has the expertise in this field so that whenever there is any issue on that side, they yeah. know they can count on you to, to do it. Yes, exactly. So hmm. in, in that case it means that being in Ghana, like, or working for the companies in Ghana is, is quite... <laughs> for me now, I don't think I would actually go for a Ghanaian company as, mm. as, as I talk to you. Because you wouldn't, they wouldn't get the maximum potential out of you. Yeah, so I think my first, no, one of my second companies, it was a German company. Okay. So they, they actually, they were looking for my specialty only. Okay. Aside that, nothing again. Okay. So that was when I actually developed okay. my skills and my experience in the software key automation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you also mentioned something about time management. Yes. Yeah. So as somebody who is like, you know, always behind the computer, how do you apportion your, your time to have a chance to also maybe travel, like have some fun? Yeah. And also maybe uh, keep yourself healthy because sometimes even from my own experience, you can be buried and you've not even eaten for a long time. It happens. Yeah. It happens. So for 
how do you go about your time management? Are there any techniques you can share with us? Um, so the the tool I use a lot is Google Calendar. Okay. It's like my bread and butter. Oh wow. So if I show you my calendar right now, it's jam-packed with a lot of things. And whenever it's 6 a.m. and I've told myself this is what I need to do. Whatever thing I'm doing, mm-hmm. I leave it and attend to it. Wonderful. I leave it and attend to it yeah, because I know that is the time I've allocated to do this particular thing. And when the time is up, I need to attend to it. Because if you don't do that, you realize you are pushing, you, you would end up pushing all what you need to do in the day backwards. Mm. And you you realize it's going to eat into the next day, exactly. the next week, the next month. Exactly. And you realize you'll be far behind time. So for Google, um, I said Google Maps, uh, Google for the calendar. Google Calendar, I really use it a lot. Whatever I need to do, I put it in the calendar and I set a reminder. Oh, 30 minutes more okay. to do this. 30 okay. minutes more to do this. Okay. So that's what has really helped me. Wonderful, wonderful. Also, one thing I know is that the tech space is is a booming industry, but that also means that it's fast developing. Yes. And with the, I mean, the advent of AI, it's like even ChatGPT is not able to write codes and all. So <laughs> the question is, what I'll ask is, how would you position yourself or how do, should people position themselves in the tech space such that like as fast as it's developing, they still remain relevant? Yes. Uh-huh. So what I would say is you should know how to use the AI. Okay. That's the main thing I would say. You should know how to use the AI because the AIs have been developed. There are a lot of AI models around. So you would, you would have to study to know how to use it because... They've developed it, but the thing is there. You, the thing is that it can't work on its own until you instruct it to sure. do this or do that. Sure. So even though they are saying, for me personally, even though they are saying AI is coming to take our jobs, I personally don't believe in that. You need to learn how to use it so that even if it's taking your job, you would have to know instruct. how to instruct it so that you can still be relevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, it, it, I I know of some layoffs that happened at Twitter, Facebook. Yes. And I was like, ah, the, the tech space is supposed to be like the future. So yes. how, how are these things also affecting? Well, I think these companies to have, um, let's say, they are, everyone is making profits. Mm. Everyone wants to make a profit. Yeah. So when they realize, hey, if we've employed this number of people and the profit that we are getting is not really meeting our expectation, the next thing is to make sure they lay off some people. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. So you have to, as you said, I think the most important thing is like keep learning. Keep learning every keep, day. Keep developing yourself. Yeah. So that you constantly remain relevant. Yes. Okay. And with your time management too as well. So if you see over here, I have this quote. Hmm which reads, do what you have to do when you have to do it, whether you feel like doing it or not. So if I know I have to do this thing, I need to do it, whether I feel like doing it or not. I need to do it because that's the time I need to do it. Wonderful. So anytime that I'm working and I see this, I know, hey, you need to do this. <laughs> okay. Even though sometimes they'll be playing football match, you know, it's my team that's playing, but... as now. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, you need to do something. So... That's how it is. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. You see, one thing that I've I've learned from this conversation, or that has resonated with me, is that sometimes uh, you sit back and then look at what is happening in somebody's life, and it, sometimes it's easy to ascribe it to like luck, that they, they just got lucky or something. But when you talk to them, you realize that a lot of there are a lot of intentional actions people you behind. Take, yeah, in order to get certain results. Yes. Because like in life. It's like things respond to how we act. Exactly. So you can't just sit back and, and expect life to happen to you and expect luck and goodwill to, to just cause yeah. things to happen in your life. You have to be very intentional. Yes. And once you are intentional about it, that's when the luck also comes in. Okay. Because if I wasn't, let's say, skilled or I wasn't learning mm. and that opportunity or that luck came that, hey, this is the job opportunity and I've not actually prepared for it. When that luck comes or... When that fever comes, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to meet it. Yeah, you won't be ready to, to yeah, seize that to grab it. Yeah. So even though lack to place much, you you are you also supposed to make sure you are you've prepared yourself, ever ready to make sure whenever the opportunity comes anywhere, you grab or you jump on it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Also, I know you you have your expertise in the in the tech space, but yeah. Um, what advice would you give to the regular layman who is using the internet regarding how they can be safe and, you know, 
Uh, because a lot of things go on these days where people get scammed, people get, uh, you know, people lose. Or I, I even had an incident where a friend of mine, they just sent him an email and he clicked on a link in the email and they hacked everything. Yeah. So to the, the regular internet user, as a tech guru, <laughs> what advice would you give to them? Are there any tips you can share? Yeah, so for me, number one, I use a VPN. Okay. So almost every time I know when I, whenever I'm browsing anything on the internet, I know I'm secure because this VPN, what it does is tries to um, encrypt all your data before it hits the internet. So even if someone sends you a malicious link and you have the VPN and someone tries to and you click on the link, the probability of they getting your data is really, really minimal. I see. Yes. So for me, my VPN is on 20, 24-7. How, how do I install that VPN? Or how do I okay, use it? so there are free VPNs, but I wouldn't advise anyone getting a free VPN because anything free, there is something, mm. there is... That, yeah, so for me, I actually use a paid VPN. And maybe someone wouldn't be able to um, afford to be paying or buying VPN subscriptions every month. Mm. So what the main thing is very suspicious. You are supposed to be very um, careful, vigilant of every link that comes to you. So for me, sometimes they will send you links on WhatsApp. Click this to redeem this mm -hmm, and that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those things, you are not supposed to click them. Okay. And normally when you realize these links come to it, HTTP, without the HTTPS, many yeah, exactly. of, of them secure. are not secured. And whenever you click on them, most of them have this um, phishing traps um, that they, they've actually, I'm trying to break it down so that everyone would understand. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so that they've actually done it in such a way that when you click on it, they, those things are actually living on your PC and what PC or phone and whatever information that you are doing, they will be able to track it and they will be able to get all your information information your credit card details mm. your password wow and all those things okay. and which is quite scary so for me i don't it's not every link that i click on or even if i will click on those links i make sure i try to open it in like in a private mode even though that you can't even it's not that secure mm. i normally open those links in private mode see because private mode normally your browsing history and your cookies and your passwords are not in the private mode so mm. most of the time they wouldn't be able to access wonderful yeah those things it's a very important tips you know yeah don't click any link just any link you know uh, if you have to you can use private mode you can yes. use vpn yes to uh, access those links wonderful okay um the first time i saw i saw that you were into tech was when you posted on facebook how you could check if somebody views your profile i don't know if you remember ah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was a long time ago yeah i screenshotted it oh i, I still have it wow I I see. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, I so see. so i mean are there any those hacks maybe you can also share with us uh, um, online. So those things, I've, I, because I don't do them, okay, okay. I've actually forgotten about okay. about them. Wonderful. Okay, I've actually I forgotten see. about them. I think you would have to go into the HTML and change some things. I've actually forgotten about them. Wow. I've forgotten about them. I see. Yeah. There's been a lot of growth, you know. Yes. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, so um, you are a youth in Ghana. You are in Ghana and you've worked with um, international companies. You've worked yeah. with people outside Ghana. Yeah. And I'm sure you've noticed that like their mindset and the way they, they approach work and life, there are certain differences that maybe you think that if the Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian could incorporate some of these ideas into their daily living, it could, it could help us. Okay, mm -hmm. so one thing about working with international companies are there is the flexibility and freedom okay. they give you the freedom to do what you want to do okay. but in ghana hey you're supposed to do this hey you did this thing you're supposed and after, after i started working with international companies that's when i really found the difference they give you the freedom even though they've given you the freedom they they've they've trusted you to make sure you are doing your work mm. and by in ghana it's not that way because i feel they are trying to every time they are trying to make sure they are micromanaging you whatever thing you are doing they want to know and sometimes you mm. see we are all not the same and someone will be so timid about it they say hey they, they want me to do this exactly and with that you wouldn't be able to even feel free 
to do what you to want to do yourself. Uh, to express yourself to do what work. you want to do yeah i see but you see the i think the reason why the Ghanaian companies do that is, is because they have the impression that you would get lazy or if they don't if their eyes are not on you all the time yeah you might not be productive but how is it that the international companies give you the freedom and then they still how do they still ensure that you get a job done and it's like they are even more effective that method is yeah really it's more very effective. effective so so i don't understand like how does it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get you mm. so i think also when they are recruiting you you go some of the companies you do about three four five six even seven interviews before they actually hire you okay so it's not only about you doing the work mm. for it to work no it's not only about that they actually interview you to make sure they know who you are how you deal with time mm. like as i said they gave me one of my tests to finish in two weeks but i did it in two days yeah so doing it in two days actually gives them the impression the the impression that oh this guy would be when we give him a task this guy would be able to complete it on time so it's actually one of those things that they actually look out for and so during this interview they actually check your communication skills they check um how you re relate to people okay they check how so so because they are recruited they know the questions to ask you and the way you respond to it actually tell them that this guy will be someone we can trust on mm. to do the work so it's Wonderful. not even about you having the hard skills to do all these programming things but rather you need to also have the hard skills and the soft skills. soft skills. So when they are interviewing you, they are actually looking at the two to see if you would be a good match Wonderful. between the two Wonderful. before they actually pick you. I think that that's one important lesson that I'm, I'm also taking from this because I realize that there are a lot of, um, okay, I may need to do some recruitment along the journey. Yeah. And I think it's important, it's very important that you, first of all, like the interview stage is where you check certain things, whether yes. you can trust this person, exactly, whether this person is determined, self-motivated, and yes. all. And once you you have a person like that in your space, allow them to express themselves. Yes. Let them do. Let them be creative. Exactly. Do what they, they they want to do. And you get the best out of them. That that's amazing because I worked with a company before. I will not mention the name. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the the there's a. You, you speak to some of the guys who are you know operating certain things and they tell you how how angry they are because the boss says do this yeah so they also follow the instruction that okay i'm supposed to do this while they know they operating the machine know that what well, that it's will not, not yeah that will not help yield optimal results or yeah. the best results yeah but because you said they should do it you too they, they also go ahead and do it exactly like that. but if you allow these people okay you were saying. yeah so with after working with international companies when they give us a timeline that hey, we need to finish this task i also kick back tell them no but this thing if you want a good work with this time frame you've given us there's no way we can get you a very good job mm. so this is the time at least even though you are giving them the time it should be a reasonable amount of time there are days that the pressure will come okay. that you would have to spend extra time to to do it but on the average you are supposed to make sure that the time they are giving you to do a particular task is actually reasonable and during that time you would be able to give them a very good work else if they rush you to do things you see and the tech space is you are constantly building on maybe today you write one method tomorrow you are going to write another method you are constantly building on it so if from the beginning you do anything shabby or any shoddy work you realize in four five six months one year time your code base would become very flaky and oh, wow. it wouldn't be able to do you realize time to time you would have to go back to be fixing things i see so and the whites they understand this that's why they try to give you that room mm -hmm. and time to actually develop something very concrete wow yeah amazing um <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been a very interesting conversation. Yeah. I don't know if you maybe you have some last words for, for my my yeah my viewers. So I would say the text space now mm. there are a lot of resources online, YouTube, Udemy, there are a lot of books. Mm. There are a lot of resources available. Okay. And now because there are a lot of resources available, now getting the jobs to have now become a bit difficult. Mm. First it was the other way around the jobs were more but the resources and the skills were not there but now that the resources are there 
the jobs are becoming very difficult. Okay. And one thing I would say is you should, wh- wherever you find yourself, wherever company you are, you should develop that um, personal relationships between your co-workers. Because from my experience, mm. when a job is in, let's say my company needs a job, they will ask me, do I know someone who would be able to do this? And probably I've actually worked with someone in the past and I realized, hey, this guy is very good. So I'll first recommend that guy even before the company sends out, they are posting that they need someone. So if you're having this kind of very good personal relationship with your colleagues, mm. it's really, 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 it really helps. Yeah. Because where I find myself now, it was a colleague that I worked with who actually recommended me. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. If I wasn't that diligent and I hadn't that um, established that relationship with him, there's no way he's going to recommend mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So now that the jobs are very uh, getting difficult to get, you should also try to establish um, more personal relationship between your co-workers or try to at- at- attend boot, um, boot camps. Maybe there's a seminar or there's a webinar going on. You try to exchange contacts. You don't know who you are um, interacting with. If there's once you interact with the person, you tell the person, oh, this is my area of expertise. It's at the back of their mind. When your company needs someone, they wouldn't go and post it on LinkedIn or they wouldn't post it on their side that they need someone because they will try to get the people internally. Yeah. If they are not getting it internally, that's then when they, they, go they go out to find um, people. Wonderful. Actually, yeah. I also share that experience too. Because exactly. I got a major gig because of a person I worked with who yeah. recommended me. You see? So, yeah. I mean that that's a big lesson. If you are listening, I know you are. <laughs> that's a big lesson you should take from this. So I mean, on this note, I'll I'll say a very big thank you. Yeah. You've learned. I've learned a lot. I've gotten a lot of value from this, and I want to thank you very much for yeah. for having me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so, too. Until I see you next time, I always tell you that life has episodes of chaos and peace. But after each episode, you should pause and ask yourself, what can I learn from this? See you next time. Bye bye.